May I come in, sir? Please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's not exactly morning, right? Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon. Shashank. Yes, sir. Uh, take your seat, please. Thank you, sir. Shashank, we are missing your DAF 1. So, uh, a quick idea about what were your optionals? Optional, what was your optional? Uh, yes, sir. My uh, optional is anthropology. Anthro. Yes, sir. How many appearances before UPSC? Uh, this is my fourth attempt. Fourth attempt. First interview or you uh, mean first interview? First interview. Yes, sir. When is your interview? Uh, it is scheduled in uh, third phase, like not yet oh. scheduled. Yes, sir. Oh, so you have plenty of time. Yes. So, Shashank, for the benefit of the panel, can you give a brief introduction, please? Uh, yes, sir. My name is Shashank Kumar. I was born in uh, East Champaran, Motihari, uh, in Bihar. Uh, I like to uh, interact with people. It helps me in social learning. Uh, lately, I have started practicing Vipassana. I consider myself as optimistic and caring person. Thank you, sir. So, Shashank, yes, your sir. father is a railway employee, right? Yes, sir. Tell me something about bullet trains. They were very much in the news. They still are. Uh, firstly, why are they called a bullet train? Is it because they are as fast as a bullet? Uh, in my opinion, yes, sir. It is as fast as a bullet? No, sir. Uh, like, not as fast as bullet, but it is... Uh, because it is much faster than other trains, in comparison to other trains, it is called bullet train. No, that's absolutely the wrong answer. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. They are called a bullet train because the sh first one had, and uh, the other ones also, the nose is shaped like a bullet. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, there's no universally accepted world standard about the speed after which one a train is entitled to be called a bullet train. But there is general consensus. Can you tell me for new tracks and refurbished tracks, what are the speed limits? Any uh, idea? Uh, sir, I, exactly I am not aware, aware about the speed limit. Okay, you would be aware that uh, Bihar, in Bihar prohibition has yes, been enforced? Sir. Yes, sir. If I put, to, put it before you that prohibition has not been a success in any country in which it has been introduced, and in Bihar also, it is a massive failure and should be scrapped. What would be your response? Uh, I, would not, I would not like to be scrapped in Bihar specifically because Bihar uh, citizens have demanded the prohibition law, which government has uh, uh, come up with prohibition law. But there are so many studious liquor debts. Yes, sir. There are some lacunas in uh, the implementation of prohibition law, but uh, we should be uh, more uh, and uh, like uh, uh, more concerned about the implementation part rather than scrapping it. How would you propose that the implementation be improved? Uh, it can be on the multiple level. First, the awareness among the citizens. Uh, it is there. It is coming, uh, but. So it has to be upgraded awareness and the corruption the nexus between the uh, producer manufacturer and the distributor has to be broken there is also some nexus between the uh, politicians and the uh, manufacturer also which has to be ch uh, checked upon my final question if you were to compare google search with chat gpt yes sir how would you distinguish between the two and use uh, food as an analogy? Uh, sorry, sir, I'm not able to. Very simple. With... Yes. Sir. Google search engine gives you the ingredients. Yes, Chat sir. GPT gives you the finished Perfect. dish. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Chang, yes, sir. you're fond of playing cricket. Yes, sir. Uh, are you a batsman, a bowler? Or... Uh, I'm a batsman all rounder. You're a batsman and all rounder? Yes, sir. So, what do you mean by this term, carry your bat? And cricket, yes, it said that this bat, this batsman carried his bat. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm yeah, you're not aware of it. Okay. And uh, how will you differentiate between a swing and a reverse swing? Uh, both are opposite. Like, uh, if uh, one is swing, swing in which the shiny part. Uh, there is difference between the uh, the shiny part where it moves. Uh, when it is new ball, 
the shiny part moves uh, where the shiny part goes where the air goes and uh, its reverse is called reverse swing when the ball is old so the basic difference is the new ball and a old ball yes sir uh, now bihar still has some left wing extremist problem is your home district or that east champaran yes. is it affected by that and uh, right now how many districts are still affected uh, sir uh, when i was a small when i went uh, when i was going to my uh, east champaran district i saw some activities of maoists there but today it is very much less affected uh, today uh, we have uh, controlled that and i am not aware about how many districts are affect still affected but the border areas of nepal and india are uh, somewhere there is uh, some instances of Maoist. Activity. Is it only in the border area or in other areas of Bihar also? Uh, in the Jharkhand border also uh, there may be some. Uh, which border. are hilly areas. The terrains are difficult. Do you watch movies? Uh, very less movies. Very less. Okay. okay. No, I wanted to ask you about a new series which had come regarding Bihar. Khaki. You have not, you're not, not, you're not seen it. Okay, fine. Now tell me, why caste census is being done in Bihar and why so many other political parties are opposed to this? So what is the plus and minus of a caste census? Uh, caste census, uh, to my knowledge, which uh, Nitish Kumar government is uh, carrying out in Bihar government, it is, it is to enumerate the number of uh, caste in uh, the demographic uh, statistics uh, for the implementation of various schemes and it is being carried out in other states also like Odisha uh, in, uh, and other parties are also uh, uh, telling that we should do that caste census but census is in a union list uh, according to the seventh schedule and uh, the state can only do population survey which uh, states are doing. Uh, one plus point is that uh, in reservation we have caste base uh, we have caste basis reservation in that uh, the categorization can be done uh, where the more uh, more needy people can get the uh, benefits of the reservation but the uh, negative point is that it can lead to caste based politics which is uh, which is bad for developmental politics in our country and for which bihar is famous yes sir Unfortunate. Okay. Now this reservation, how long do you think this will go on? Initially it was intended for a certain amount of time. Sir, it is difficult to answer this question because... Difficult to answer. Okay. My last question to you. There are certain districts called aspirational districts. Have yes. you heard about it? And there is some, something latest the CM a Prime Minister has uh, in a meeting they said about aspirational blocks so what are these and uh, what exactly is done there in these places uh, these aspirational districts are those districts which are uh, lacking in some socio-economic development in indicators we have a program called aspirational districts program which is running for this uh, aspirational district how many districts are there, there? Uh, in the first phase 115 districts and in the second phase 10 or 9 districts okay what about blocks I'm not aware of it. You're not aware of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Shashank. Yes, sir. Welcome to the interview. Thank you, sir. See, uh, you are not very fond of movies and all, but okay. Uh, now, this is a time of OTT platforms. Yes. What is OTT platform? Uh, over the top platform, it is called. And uh, it is uh, like democratization of movies, uh, the platform, democratization. And there is a censor board which censors uh, movies and all. Yes. Do, do the censor board have jurisdiction over the OTT also? Uh, as my limited knowledge is like uh, IT rules have some uh, overview over OTT platforms, but censorship is not uh, applicable. Okay, I give you the topic that OTT should be brought under censor board. You speak 30 seconds in favor of that, 30 seconds against that. Tell me what are your arguments on both sides. So first I will speak in favor of uh, OTT brought under censorship. Because OTT are 
the content of the OTTs are so much violent and uh, it is uh, and OTT is very much uh, reachable to the uh, children group also. So it should be brought under censorship in which there should be parental locks and all the other uh, things which uh, which might uh, benefit to the children age group and uh, because it is uh, coming up with so much of uh, violent activities in that it much must be brought into censorship act uh, second i'll talk about not bringing it into censorship is that it is the freedom uh, with which uh, ott platforms work and uh, it is the beneficial uh, part of that ott that they are bringing so much of innovative contents with them so it should not be brought under censorship act but there should be some regulations some oversight uh, oversight over these ott platforms okay have you heard of jack ma uh, sorry sir but uh, he is a businessman yeah which means which country which prominent company whatever it is if I am not wrong, sir, uh, Alibaba founder. He was in news some time back, maybe a long time back. Some yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was in news. Why, why was in news uh, about six months, one year back? Yes, sir. Uh, he, is, uh, he is a citizen of China. And uh, China have uh, put some restrictions on him. And uh, he was uh, like out of the uh, news, like out of the uh, no, the, the public is fair for them. Uh, and recently, some uh, uh, another prominent businessman also uh, gone uh, gone missing there. Do you know which one? Uh, no, sir, I am not aware. Okay. See, India is a member of Quad. Yes. What is Quad for? Uh, Quad is uh, uh, the main purpose of Quad is the uh, for the oversight of the Indian Ocean, uh, free and open. Uh, we uh, we ca we. Uh, like we promote the free and open Pacific policy or uh, Indo-Pacific policy for that quad is there. It is to checkmate some some country? Uh, not officially uh, to checkmate, but we uh, we are there for China's expansionist policy. Okay. So, we so we are against the China expansionist policy in quad, but we are also member of the BRICS. Yes. Which are the country in BRICS? Uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, India. China and South Africa. And how can we be member of uh, two contradictory groups? One is uh, anti-China, against China. One is with China. Yes. So how can we balance these two two groupings? Uh, sir, the purpose of the both the groups are very different. One is for Indo-Pacific uh, group, and uh, one is uh, uh, mainly related to the trade part. BRICS is trade part. So we have to engage China. We do not have to like. Uh, uh, alienate China. We have to engage China because China is an economy which is booming. And uh, if we will not engage China, it is in our loss only. So we have to continue its uh, expansionist policy also, and at the same time in engage with it. Okay. See, a concept of live-in relationship is gaining popularity, and then Supreme Court also has given some views on that. Better went to Supreme Court also. So what do you think the future of uh, institutional marriage vis-a-vis -vis the live-in relationship? Uh, live-in relationship is uh, like I, I would say mostly concentrated in urban areas. But uh, as we are uh, a society which uh, respects our culture and traditions, I, I don't think institutional marriage uh, will take a hit somewhere. But it will not uh, widely like vanish from India. Marriage is a jail, lifetime, lifetime Im Im imprisonment. No, and live relationship is a, an, a, an open relationship. You can enter, you can walk out at any time. So it's mutually beneficial to both the people. I will not compare uh, this institutional marriage with lifetime imprisonment because uh, it is the happiness and uh, with which both the, uh, both the... Because we have a uh, divorce also, sir. Uh, if they are not happy in that relationship, they can move out with that relationship. And what is wrong with the li 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 living relationship? Uh, there is no wrong in living relationship. It is on the uh, choice of the individual, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Shashank, I'll yes. take you a little more, uh, you know, away from this. Uh, since cricket is one of your interests, yes. uh, recently, uh, you know, we've always had this uh, men's Premier League, 
Now, what has happened recently? What has started to... Uh, women in Premier League, right? Uh, this is one of the innovative steps taken by BCCA, like Indian Cricket, uh, Women IPL. And uh, in that, it is on the lines of the men's IPL success. And we have five teams in that. Uh, this will boost up the cricket of women and the culture. The, it will change the culture, the sports culture in our country where women will participate more in. But has already the women's cricket, uh, how popular is women's cricket in India and abroad? Is there, a, is there a enough uh, sort of audience for it, you think? Or uh, what is the first, uh, the two matches have taken place. So what was the general perception or the general uh, reception, should I say, to the Women's Premier League? Apart from the first match, uh, both the uh, other two matches have been interesting matches and uh, there is some viewership of that. But if we compare with the men's, it will be unfair to compare with other sports. But you think it will be, it will go in that direction, this is the right step to have been taken? And what is the other uh, path-breaking uh, sort of uh, decision taken by their cricket uh, for, for women's cricket uh, one I can tell uh, is the equal pay by BCCI which uh, they have taken. and what is the future you think future path future is bright for women's IPL because there is much scope for uh, cricket in women's sector uh, then uh, you know the UN, Ukraine uh, Russia war has been going on for more than one year and it also cast a shadow on the recent uh, G20 meetings of the finance minister and uh, finance ministers and foreign ministers. So tell me a little bit about the war and what is happening and why is it not, where is it headed, what's happening? Uh, Ma'am, uh, there is some effect on this G20 meeting in which uh, uh, I would say this uh, uh, one foreigners, uh, foreign ministers meeting, uh, Japan has not attended. There have been two blocks, create, creation of two blocks, one which is supporting China, uh, supporting Russia uh, and one who is pro-West. And uh, we are hanging in the between that uh, we are trying to balance with the West also and with uh, Russia also. I would not... Uh, How effective has that been? You think that is the right policy approach by India? Uh, in my opinion, yes, ma'am, it is the right policy because uh, uh, we are there for our interest. If our interest serves to be in the middle, we will be in the middle. And what is the whole Ukraine war about? What started it? What is the basic reason and why is it just going on and on? And do you think there will be any reconciliation in the near future? Uh, What's up? Oh, peace, peace in the future. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one reason is uh, the NATO's expansion. Uh, the NATO is expand, expanding in the uh, eastern wards towards the border of the uh, Russia and it has created a security problem for that for them and uh, the second reason can be colonial uh, hangover of Russia because uh, uh, in 1991 till 1991 they were all uh, Soviet Russia and uh, uh, they still think that the, the, it is part of that Russia that's why uh, in 2014 also they annexed Crimea. And so what is the solution? Do you think any solution can be found? What is the best way forward to end this war? Uh, it is dialogue and diplomacy, but uh, both countries are not ready for at this juncture. They are not ready, but uh, India can play a very important role in dialogue. and uh, oh. Like we have good relation with uh, Ukraine also and Russia also. But we were not able to find a solution now for the G20 to come, you know, to bring the warring sides, so to speak. But who were the warring sides? Ukraine was not there. Uh, yes, ma'am, because it is not member of... Uh, so then, how, how will the... So who are the parties involved, really? Uh, basically, the West part and the Russian part are involved in, in those. And that has become a fall guy kind of thing, no? Yes. So Ukraine is being used by these... Western bloc. Western bloc and uh, Russia to meet their own uh, geopolitical aims. Yes, ma'am. They are providing uh, arms and ammunition and, uh, to them and uh, this has fueled uh, war to long period. And they don't want them to stop because they're going on giving them more and more support, right? So you think the war is going to end anytime soon? Uh, I can't uh, say this. Can't say, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Shashank, yes, so with respect to Bihar, so your chief minister multiple times 
uh, has been changing the alliances. So what do you see uh, the impact of uh, pre-poll versus post-poll alliance? How do you look at this? Uh, I would say this is bad for uh, citizens because citizens have given vote on the basis of pre-poll alliance and after that uh, they are changing the parties which is uh, not uh, they are not uh, trustworthy like this, these uh, policies are not trustworthy with the citizens okay in this regard do you see any supreme court directives or any uh, committee that has given recommendations uh, sorry sir i'm not aware uh, i am aware but i am not able to recall sir okay so with respect to post poll alliance uh, imagine there is no pre poll alliance and there is only post poll alliance after the polls all, all the parties contested separately and after the results they have come to a uh, to an alliance so how do you look at the uh, democratic implications or uh, the people's mandate in this regard uh, post post uh, post poll alliance is also on the uh, like they have if they have some ideology uh, con uh, concurrence they will do the post poll alliance and uh, for forming a government they need some uh, seats majority of seats that's why they are forming post poll alliance that's fine but how do you look at it in terms of democratic mandate is it is it uh, good to go on or how does it work uh, it happens because of because people have not given any uh, uh, like certain uh, uh, certain votes to the political party uh, so in my opinion it can be it can be good for forming government if because if we will go on electioning uh, again on the next time it will be a burden on the state uh, economy also okay so can you talk something about this vipassana meditation yes uh, vipassana is a is an ancient form of uh, ancient technique of meditation uh, it is related to the buddhism religion buddhism uh, sect of religion and uh, i have uh, participated in the in a 10 day course of vipassana in september 2022 uh, it has been a transformative experience for me uh, it has brought calmness and uh, uh, it has uh, um, helped me to uh, manage my emotional part of me like stress anxiety depression and all that apart from health benefits it has mental benefits it has helped me to um, uh, improve my public relations skills i have started uh, appreciating the uh, power of silence it has given me how is it different from other forms of meditation uh, one difference is that uh, uh, vipassana uh, vipassana literal's meaning is uh, to be in the present to be uh, to see things as they, uh, they are in other forms of meditation to my mind they have some uh, breathing exercises or some exercises related to physical activities uh, it is absent in vipassana vipassana is all about seeing the things which are there uh, in the present okay so and one more thing with respect to budget so there is a term used called saptarshi so what is it related to uh, the background of saptarshi sir no in the present context in which it is used in budget uh, saptarishi are the seven sectors uh, where uh, government is eyeing to uh, target those sectors for the socio economic development of the country can you name at least whatever you remember uh, i have limited knowledge about that and uh, infrastructure um, inclusive development uh, these two things okay so another area so with respect to center state relations so there has been uh, bihar is one of the state uh, which has a, a kind of frictions so how do you look at it in terms of uh, uh, fiscal federalism or with respect to the administrative federalism to which direction the country is moving towards uh, it is good that uh, both have some uh, like uh, they have different ideologies and uh, sorry sir can i take some time for that yes sir uh, 
the friction between the central and the state have been there from like from a historical past also we have seen that but uh, uh, if there is some uh, something like uh, if state uh, central government is not uh, giving funds to the state government uh, because of political differences political ideological differences that is bad for fiscal federalism but if there are differences and that is being resolved uh, by dialogue it is good for the so are we how, in what direction are we moving towards are we strengthening the fiscal federalism or how does it uh, there have been some allegations about uh, weakening of the fiscal federalism uh, the center should uh, understand the uh, uh, requirements of the states also. Can you give some context? Uh, Example or something? Example GST funds have not been uh, like timely. They have not been divulged to these states. What is the reason? Uh, one reason is like uh, uh, the revenue for the central government is also shrinking. That's why they are not passing the benefits to the states. Mm. Okay. I think one last question with respect to again budget. So there has been increasing uh, public debt, government debt, central government debt or even with respect to state governments. So how do you look at it? Is it necessary or should government follow more stricter uh, fiscal uh, discipline? Uh, we have been out of COVID uh, recently and uh, because of that uh, some debt has been accrued to the both central and state government but in my opinion if debt is there for capital expenditure it is good but for revenue expenditure if we manage the fiscal debt it will be better for them so do you, did you see any kind of uh, talk about uh, capital expenditure in this budget uh, we have increased our capital expenditure to the 10 percent of the budget yes. thank you sir. So that brings us to the end of our formal interaction.